Did you ever meet someone who is so passionate, so knowledgeable about what they do, it's infectious? Well, Steve, I have to say, that's what it feels like to me meeting you today. Well, thank you very it much. Really I didn't does. realize I had that effect. Oh, well, you really do. And now I'm here. We're here at the Dwajak Area History Museum. And I can't wait to share this with our friends today because what a cool place. We've got a great collection of stuff that I really enjoy showing off to people. Absolutely. Now, there's about there's three different levels here. Tell us a little bit about what what's on each level. All right, well, this ground floor that we're on right now mm -hmm. is uh, dedicated to the industry of Dwajak. As you can see, we've got big, some big heavy iron yes. things behind us. Uh, so it's all about the industry of Dwajak. We had the uh, Round Oak Stove Company, we mm -hmm. had the Head and Tackle Company, and a lot of different industries here in town. On the second floor, we've got uh, kind of a little thorough telling of the Dwajak story from 1848 to present. Everything from the railroad coming through to the orphan train and even uh, Mr. Miss Dowajak, who became Miss Michigan. I saw her dress. I can't wait to you guys see that, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, the downstairs uh, level has, uh, has some other interesting stories of the people from our area, including the Potawatomi Indians and the uh, kind of a, an exhibit that I call Small Town, Big World, Locals Who Made History. So it's about people who went out into the big world and made a difference in the world. Very nice. Now, uh, history is always evolving, and this place has evolved because you guys were at South Miss Michigan South College, mm -hmm. right, and you were there for a number of years, but you've been here at this location about uh, We opened four here years? in 2013, mm -hmm. so I think that equals four, right? Yeah, yeah I think it's four. Yeah, <laughs> good. We, we, we know how to do math early in the morning here. But this is the Round Oak, yes. one, of the, one of the biggest displays down here on the first floor. So tell us a little bit about the history behind it. So the uh, Round Oak Stove Company, uh, they were founded by a guy named P.D. Beckwith in 1871, and by the turn of the century, 1900, they were one of the largest stove manufacturers in America. America. and they are collected continent-wide and uh, and they are just absolutely beautiful pieces of work they that uh, you know the craftsmanship that went into them is really extraordinary right. and so what happened because it kind of not around today so what they, ended they up aren't happening? around today they uh, so they were a huge company they uh, really dominated Dwajak's landscape for about mm, about 70 years and then in 1947 shortly after World War II they had trouble transitioning back to civilian production and kind of phased out Right, but they're so intricate. I mean, I wish, I, I don't know if you could get a real good close-up. So you have the oldest one, which is on that end, and Kelsey will get a shot of that. And this one here is... Is this the last one that was made? No, that's Those? just the most beautiful one. That, that they is made. the most beautiful. You know what it kind of reminded me of? Can I say? So when I looked at it, it reminded me of the Wizard of Oz. I don't know why, but it just had this effect that said, like, I am the wizard, it, like in the, it in look, the city. It, it looks it? like it could belong in Oz's castle. I, I, it sure does. It sure does. Well, you have a lot of other things, not in Oz's castle, but we're going to head on down because I saw this wigwam down there. I think it's so cool. I can't wait till you guys see it. It's a great piece of work. So many cool things to see, but this really caught my eye when I came down here. When was this added to the museum? We added this, uh, it was the summer after we opened up, the, uh, had Mike Zimmerman who came down and he actually harvested all this bark for this tree, had harvested the saplings and uh, had a couple of helpers, Kyle Malott and Jason Alville, who constructed it for us here at the museum. They're members of the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi. And a lot of history that with the Potawatomi that tied to Dwajak oh, as absolutely. well, that you, you have here in the museum. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, without uh, the efforts of Chief Leopold Pokagan back in the 1830s, uh, we wouldn't have a strong Potawatomi presence here in the Dwajak area today. Absolutely. What is the response when people come down here, particularly kids? I'm sure they it, must get a kick out of it's this. It's about the same as yours was, actually. <laughs> when they come down the stairs and they see it, oh my, oh my, and then they usually can uh, run, on, run on inside of that. Uh, that's one th kind of pretty fun thing that we have down on this level is that we have some interactive things that kids can do, like walking into the, uh, walking into the wigwam. Yes. We've got some uh, things over there like, that oh, they nice. can do, like a, a drum that they can beat, some sweet, sweet grass that they, th that they can smell, and uh, you know, some pretty cool interactive stuff that they can do. Nice. Now, one of your favorite stories is also on this level, right? Yes. Let's uh, go take a look at that. All right. Sounds good. One of the things I love that you do here is that you're able to highlight the lives and stories of people that may, most people may not even know. And so this section is called Small Town Big World. 
Locals who made history. That's yes. right. And one of my favorite stories is right behind us here. <laughs> it is Webb Miller. He was uh, he was raised in here in Dowagic and went out. And I say you can kind of follow world history through his footprints from 1915 to 1940 when he passed away. Tell us a little bit about what he did. What was some of his stories about? Well, he hooked up with the United Press. He was a journalist, and uh, once he got that job with the United Press, they sent him everywhere that a big story was happening. One of his uh, big stories was the Gandhi independence movement uh, in 1930. He was the first Western journalist covering uh, covering that movement, and so his wow. his stories out of India really changed world opinion against the British Empire at that time. Great. What's another one of the stories here? Another one of the stories? Well, some, uh, we've got a, a pretty cool thing back here, and that is an actual letter that he wrote from the Hindenburg. He was on the first transatlantic flight of the Hindenburg in 1936, so we actually have a letter that he wrote from the Hindenburg, which is pretty rare. That is really... Now, what are some of the reactions of people when they come through here, especially in this section? Are they really surprised to see, like, like the local heroes that have lived here in Dwajak? You know, I hear a lot of people when they're walking out saying, I didn't realize yeah. that there were so many people from our little community here who, who went out and did some big right. things like that. Made a that. big difference yeah. in their community and abroad as well. Yes. So there's one section that I saw that we we have to share it with our friends. And it's the Underground Railroad. Well, the Underground Railroad was a big story here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, it was very active here in Cass County, the Quaker settlement down by Vandalia. They say that about 1,500 uh, runaway slaves came through Cass County on their way seeking freedom. And so we kind of try and highlight some of that history here at the museum. Can we take a quick look at it? We sure can. Right, come on. You know, this is one of the one of the spots where we can't really show any artifacts because they mm -hmm. operated in secrecy. They didn't take photographs with uh, with the runaway slaves as they were coming through. So we don't have any artifacts, but we try and do it a, kind of in a little fun way with an interactive in here. Can we show us? Can you show us real it, quick? I, I don't know if we want to give away our secrets. Oh, no, you know but, what? You but, are so <laughs> right, Steve. You guys have to come and see it for yourself and try and see what but, that little but secret But this is. room, we actually do have a hidden room in this mm -hmm. spot, and it's up to the visitors to find it. Yeah, I love that. I love it. You know, that this was wonderful. Really had a great time coming here and experience everything. So thank you so much for the tour. Well, thank you very much for coming out. So what are your hours and days? All right, we're open Tuesday through Friday, 10 o'clock until 5 o'clock, and Saturdays 10 to 2. Okay, and what is the website where people can get in the touch with you? Website, www.dwajackmuseum.info. All right, well, Steve, thank you so much. And if you want any more information, you can always go on to experiencemichiana.org. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, I'm not going to show them. they got to come. <laughs> I had so much fun at that museum. You know what I love? There's so much great history yes. here in the Michiana area. In Dwajak. In Dwajak, right? Uh, say it again. No, I'm not saying it again. I'm so bad. Dwajak, yay. In New York. I know. It's a I, New York thing. Gosh. Right? It's that part of Dwajak. Dwajak. I can't help it. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but guys, what we're not sorry about is that you joined us. Thank yes. you so much for being with us. Absolutely. And if you have any ideas, shoot them to us. Shoot them up. Let us know. Facebook. Facebook. Shoot us an email. Yeah, shoot us an email. We'd there love you. to see what you'd like to experience. There you go. Well, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. We're ready to go. There's some summer happening out there. We got to make this happen. We definitely do. Guys, have a great On to weekend. The next adventure. We'll see you next week. See you guys.